They are the kings of the road from another age. And today, if you can't afford your own steam locomotive, you might consider bidding for a steam traction engine instead. In which case, you need to know about Chefin's great vintage sale near Ely in Cambridgeshire. Three and a half thousand lots, which include everything from that elusive spare part a restorer is looking for. No reserve, knocked down for a few pounds, to 100-year-old traction engines, which conjure up an England that is lost forever. The showground at Sutton is inundated with enthusiasts and potential bidders. 4,000 of them who don't seem put off by the rain. I think a lot of people believe it's sort of the Fred Dibner type people and the oily rag brigade, but far from it. We've, we've had uh, judges from London setting steam engines. We've had uh, barristers, molecular scientists, all sorts of people from all walks of life. Uh, here today you'll see a lot of people in overalls and, uh, and big coats and woolly hats, but they're, they're probably in disguise. Pride of place here goes to an 1899 engine built by John Fowler and Co of Leeds, which spent its entire working life in Ireland. The estimate? Up to £120,000. The market in traction engines has been static for several years, a direct consequence of the recession. So there's some doubt about whether this engine, named Blackjack, will reach its reserve. More likely to sell are two ploughing engines, also from John Fowler's works, but they need restoring. These are John Fowler BB1s, uh, made in about 1919. They are a pair because what happened in, the, in that time was that the engines were fitted with a winch underneath them. Both of them had a winch fitted underneath, and the plough was attached to the winch and the winch was winched up and down the field. Then the engines would move along and they'd do another three or four furrows. And it was the same with the cultivator, that followed after, and also for uh, deep ploughing as well. We have put a pre-sale estimate of 130 to 150,000. Now the steam well's been a little bit flat just of late, so we're hoping we've priced them about right, and if we get anywhere near, I suspect we shall be selling them. Bidders have to think twice before raising their paddles for these beasts. They gobble fuel. There's health and safety to take into account. And those who are thinking about investing are worried that the Chancellor will tax them unfairly. It just depends how the Chancellor chooses to tax them. When you've got a big gain from you bought something for five grand 50 years ago and you now sell it for 100 grand, you know, just depends on his attitude or his, the attitude of his officials. What do you reckon? 100 plus. Have you got an upper limit? Do you, do you put a limit on yourself? Well, the wife hopefully won't be watching this programme <laughs> and the auction will have been completed before it goes out on television, so I'll worry about that when I get home. Sheffin's raised 27,500 for this Aveling and Porter steam roller in good working order. In the 1920s, you would have seen it laying roads in Felixstowe. But first, they have to sell the Fowler ploughing engines. No smart podium here. Bill King conducts bidding in the field, literally. There we are, the pair of John Fowler BB1 ploughing engines. A rare opportunity. But £100,000, let's get to work, gentlemen. £100,000. 100 on bid, at 100,000 pound on bid, 102, 102, 102, 105, 105, at 105, 108, at 108,000 pound on bid, 110, at 110,000 pound on bid, at 110,000 pound, anybody else coming in now, at 110 on bid, at 110, 12, 112,000, 112,000 pound on bid, at 112,000 pound, I'll call the bidding three times, 115,000 on the web, at 115,000 pound on bid, at 100 £115,000 twice at £115,000. Last chance with it at £118,000. Don't say they're cheap when they're gone. At £118,000. At £120,000. Look at me, Matthew. At £120,000 on bid. At £120,000. £122,000. At £120,000. Anybody else coming in? Yes or no? At £120,000 once at £120,000 twice, at £120,000 I sell at £120,000. 120000 for two traction engines looks like a bargain, even if they do need work. Now 
now the successful bidder might consider buying lot 3124, a showman's living wagon built in 1904. It was ordered by the Murphy family, well known on the show circuit in the Northeast, and it brings back memories for Richard Preston from North Yorkshire. What is of interest is I'm a personal friend of the man who is still alive, who was born in it, and he's called John Murphy. He's one, a, a son of a famous uh, amusement catering family in North Yorkshire, and uh, he used to come to our house when I was a little boy, and we've remained very good friends ever since, yes. This amazing survivor was lived in until 1997, when it was bought from John Murphy, grandson of the man who ordered it new, and it's remarkably original, especially inside. It went in from their family into preservation, and, and it is now up for auction by the man who owns it, who incidentally lives in North Yorkshire and has a wonderful collection. And why he's selling this, I don't know, but there you are. Bill King has put an estimate of between 27 and 30,000 on this wagon, and he's not far off. A highly original but very practical um, living wagon there for you. What am I saying for this one? We've had a good amount of interest. 25,000 pound to start me. 25,000. It's a rare opportunity to acquire something of this quality at 25,000 pound. 25.5, 25.5, at 25.5, at 25,500 and be it at 25.5, at 25,500 pounds, last chance with it now, at 25,500 pounds. I'm going to have to sell it provisionally, Dave, because Chepins are pleased. Since many traction engines were taken for scrap during the Second World War, there are reckoned to be only 3,000 left in the country. And with a restricted supply, prices have gone up. 20 years ago, you could have picked up a steam traction engine for much less. The day is young. There's more to sell. Everything from model steam locomotives to cars, motorbikes to tractors. But that's another story.